Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to Node.js Microservices for building the products. So in the last couple of videos, we were talking about uh, Express TypeScript APIs, like how to build a microservices using Express TypeScript and MongoDB. Now these are like four uh, major sections in this module one. This we have already covered. So maybe I will just uh, colorize this and I will move to back. Okay. What happened to this? Then this is what we are going to talk about. Now we can just pick this express TypeScript MongoDB APIs and we will try to add a 12 factor, factor principles, which are nothing but we will try to explore what are these 12 factor principles and how we can apply to make our application real production ready, right? which can have a multiple environment, which can have a runtime configurations, which can have a proper logging, port binding, disposability, dev and production parity, log management, admin processes, and some kind of a process manager to check the Node.js processes, health check, version control, uh, how we are deploying it through the different CI CD steps, what are the different processes, port binding, concurrency, all those things are part of this 12 factor principle. This is what we are going to discuss. Okay, I will just try to move it. And then once this is done, because we are going to apply the same stuff to the Nest.js application. So here also we are going to do the same process. And so these are the three sections which we are going to talk now. Right. Uh, once this is done, we will talk about a uh, few videos on the Nest.js baseline because people might not be familiar what Nest.js is. If you are already done, that's good. How to build a Nest.js controller services and uh, APIs using Nest.js TypeScript. So we can just take an example of auth service, maybe auth microservice and build it with the Nest.js. And then we will talk about how to add these 12 factor principles, how to apply 12 factor principles on any Nest.js microservice because the end goal is building a production ready microservice. So let's talk about this. So in the 12 factor principles, these are nothing but we already know all those things. They are just like characterized with the 12 sections. So you are calling 12 factor principles. So <clears throat> the first is the code base because these are not only theoretical, we are going to see this in our code base also. So code base, code base like uh, it's all about version control, whatever the version control you use, we use a git and then how we are going to deploy the, uh, the, the same code base to the different environment. We need to have a proper branching strategy. Even if you have a different dependencies on different uh, packages, then how we manage them. So we can try to understand it something like this. This is your code base. Let's say uh, here you have your APIs or service. Okay. And you might be deploying this service to the multiple environments. So what you can do because we are using Git version control system, you can have branching. Okay. I have a develop and then I have a different branch. Let's say I have two environment only dev and master. So whenever you push or merge anything to develop, then it is going to trigger a CI that is going to deploy things to the dev environment. And when you push something or merge something to the master, then it is going to deploy things to the production. Right. So this kind of a branching strategy, let's say if I want to build a new feature, you will always check out from uh, this master branch, build your feature create a uh, new APIs, something like this. And then you merge this new feature back to develop. This is how you will propagate your feature to develop. And then maybe you can consider develop as your trunk and then merge either the same feature branch or maybe you can try to synchronize the dev with the master. So there are different branching strategies that is totally different topic. You can just go ahead with this only like you just uh, because there may be a multiple developers working on different features so you check out from the master like feature feature 3 feed auth apis right so this developer will also do that it will check out from the master branch and 
once the feature is done you will merge to the dolem and if there is any conflict you can create a temp branch and then you will merge the temp branch to the dolem and then same feature runs you can merge to the master right so once this you merge it to dev everything is good you deploy it to the master so this is how you can manage the different environment it's only about your uh, ci cd configurations that when you merge it to dev deploy to development when you merge to the master deploy to the production so it's all version controls which you can control through the ci cd and here we are already using uh, the mono repo and the packaging systems that means here you can see the packages so we can even divide the packages because these packages can be published independently and you can even change the versions okay 1.x 2.x these are like the npm packages you can either publish them to the remote and can also be used locally right so in that case uh, you can actually use different package versions across these different applications let's say you have uh, here what do we have database so this this is the current package name is 1.0.0 currently we are using because this is a workspace so we are using those packages directly into our application but you can also publish them independently and you can start using them by importing the packages from the remote npm so that is all about dependency management like okay your two two applications can uh, depend on depend on two different versions of the same package that's all about how you manage the dependencies uh, next important aspect is the dependencies right so whatever we are declaring as a dependency to our project so here you can see this is our root package json which is nothing but a global dependencies and then if i talk about this application i can create a copy of this and i can play with this renaming it as a 12 factor express typescript mongo apis right and here we can do the changes whatever we want so this is our package json here you can see all the libraries dependencies are like core dependencies and the dev dependencies are like the where you are adding the types uh, the dependency for the testing dependency for building the code but all the code dependencies will go here so here we need to make sure that we have correct and appropriate version of the dependencies added in our package json so here you can see in the root package json also we have the dependencies i mean mostly all the dev dependencies because there is no project it's a root uh, dependencies root level dev dependencies which are just talking about typescript commit lint husky commit conventions for uh, eslint dependencies and for the test okay here you can just do a npm install so it will install the dependencies in the workspace in all the projects let's say this is my project which i'm just checking right now uh, I need to add a couple of more scripts here so that I can have all those things but here you can see the dependencies and dev dependencies are totally isolated I don't have a ESLint dependencies and all because those are already declared at, at the top otherwise if you are just writing a single uh, application then you have you can you would be adding ESLint and lots of configuration lots of dependencies in the dev dependencies okay uh, so this is pretty much straightforward like how we are managing the dependencies in the different programming languages they manage it differently like there is a ruby gems and then in the python there python there is a requirement.txt there you declare all the the package and their version names so these are the versions right so here you can see 3.0.0 1.4.3 4.17.17 .17, all these versions so this is the major version minor version and the patch version and here we are allowing so there are different symbols you can use in the package json dependencies right here i'm just specifying 2.0.22 so this uh, upper arrow specifies that if there is any stable release after this patch version then it automatically upgrades okay if you are just fixing the version something like this that means no matter what happens it's not going to upgrade your dependency internally until unless you change the version name explicitly now the next important part is how we do the config management and how we are going to get the secrets 
so this is always a really a complex or i mean it can be as simple as you want or it can be as complex as you want because these are like environment variables so this is like my service okay and uh, if i want to develop this service locally what we do is we just have a dot env and we most of the time we have env dot example file i mean this is same for any other programming language also the runtime environments okay i need a database url or maybe some uh, access key and secret key like aws access key and secret key for the backend apis so we just manage them through the dot env dot file and we use this particular package dot env dot config to load the dependencies so that all these variables whatever you are declaring inside this something like this so in the variables we are just uh, putting database underscore url equal to something okay access key equal to something so whenever you do a dot env dot config in your root file in the main file then what it will do is it will actually populate all those things inside your process dot env now you can access them using process dot env database dot underscore url or you can do process dot env access key something like this okay this is uh, a way of doing it now this is not uh, happen on the production or any deployment environment what happens is you don't have a dot env file in the code base dot env file is something which you just manage for the local development where you can just populate your local database url and connect and test the apis but what happens for the production you cannot just put dot env in your code and then uh, people i mean obviously you cannot put dot env which contains the database url which is secured string so what we do is there are many ways of doing it and uh, there is no specific uh, way of doing it there are n possible ways you can have a ci cd pipelines ci cd which does the deployment to the environment so either it is a let's say i'm deploying it to the ec2 instance or maybe to a container so container is totally secured you cannot access it directly until unless you have an access so no outside person can access it the only way we need to only thing we need to do is while deploying it we need to put all these variables and these variables are configured in the ci pipeline like in the gitlab ci you can add the variables which are secured and while deploying it it will pick those variables and then it will populate those variables in the process.env of that container of that ec2 instance and container other than that there are more secured ways and that is let's say i'm deploying it to the container or something here we will just ci cd will just deploy the code and at the runtime when you are actually bootstrapping the application then you can actually manage these ci cd variables because this is a really important topic ci cd variables you can fetch these from the external third party and now this third party can be aws SS, ssm secret manager which can actually secure them uh, put them secretly which you cannot access until unless you have access and then this container at the runtime when you are bootstrapping the application will get the data and then you just populate them to the process.env and then your application will start having access so like production database url with the username password and everything is there right that we are just reading from the aws secret manager and at the runtime when you are actually doing node index.js at that time you fetch this put this in the process.env and then use it other than that there are other third party uh, platforms available which can store the data like even one password also one password provide the apis which you can read at the runtime through your code before bootstrapping so we, before even you connect to the database you will always have a database string database url okay so there are many ways of doing it the simplified way is we can just try with this like gitlab ci variables 
and you push those variables and then before even application starts you populate those variables in the process.env okay and then once application start it already has the variables but here we are storing the variables in the secret way in the gitlab ci right this is the one way of securing it but obviously when whenever it comes to securing some securing some critical information then obviously you can use aws ssm or secret manager and let your runtime or let your application bootstrap fetch those information and populate that in the process.env okay that is all config management and apart from that this is all okay i have a .env how we manage the multiple environment because obviously when you are deploying you already know either you are deploying it to dev qa or production so obviously you will be picking up the right configuration right right gitlab secret variables in the gitlab you can actually segregate these environment variables based on environment like okay i have a dev C dev variables for this application i have for the qa and for fraud and you can pick whatever is requested in the ci not like okay randomly qa and production so this is how you can segregate and for the local development if you wanted to switch then there is always uh, this king process dot env dot no dnv this you can have as a process variable which tells you okay what is the environment variable you are looking for you can have a development you can have a production or staging so based on this variable which you are going to set on the app bootstrap script okay if i let's say i'm just deploying my application or running my application for the development it will pick pick and then obviously if you want to have something like this and you wanted to have a separate separate file then you can have a something like env dot development env dot production obviously you won't be accessing the production config locally but this is how you can test the production setup or development setup and in the dot env dot env is a module right here you can specify which file to load so first you will check okay what is the process dot env dot no dnv if it is development load the env dot development if it is a production load the production env file i mean currently in our code we just have a env example so we'll just create a dot env from this and we already have this file uh, we should be in the server.ts if you see on the top dot env config so it already knows like okay i need to load the configuration from the dot env so it will look for dot env file in the root and then it will populate these values like it will populate mongo url in the process dot env so that my server dot ts uh, which is calling app dot ts can get the mongo db url okay because mongo url is already there in the dot env so it will pick it from there there may be anything uh, access key secret key like jwt access key jwt secret key is the file something like this you can add and if you see here i might be using this thing somewhere access key and the secret key while generating a token okay jw.verify secret is coming from you can see here process.env.secret so the secret name is secret here i will use this or we can just replace it with a secret key that's appropriate name right the, the correct naming jwt secret key okay so this is how you can manage the you can use a dot env and you can switch between different environments so here we can add uh, remaining scripts so we are in this project i can just try to run these basic scripts like npm run build what it will do is it will just look into the ts config file and it will target is es5 and here lots of things you can play with right because this is a typescript let's say if you are putting es2017 
and you are doing build then it is going to give you the type script in the output right if you see the server.js you can see the import statements are still there and if you try to run the project like start prod script npm run start prod you will get this issue right because you cannot import you cannot use import in the es5 code here you are running a javascript file the output javascript so you can just make it as a es5 es 2015 i think that would also work we can just build it again and here in this dist folder server.js this is still looking uh, es6 right so let's make it es5 now i will build it again so that we can start it using npm run start prod yeah it works because now it is looking for this uh, connection string but application started right so this is what we wanted and why i'm talking about this particular thing is because i have added this package script here when we where i'm passing node env so let's try to see what is the node env value we are getting in the server dot jts let's say if i just try to do console dot log process dot env dot node env and if i try to i mean we can run this also instead of building and starting this again and again start prod so you can see it is using development let's say here you can switch to uh, different environments here packages and here you can just do is a build qa build prod start dev start prod and if i do start prod what it is taking it is taking production so this node env is can be set in your script also so because here uh, based on the node env we can do lots of things we can uh, check here if process.env because the same thing will be captured here also here you can just do is process dot env dot node env equal equal to development then you can load a different file else load a different file i mean this is something which you can do and how we can do that is done with the dot env module what i remember is in the es5 we used to do something like this so the same thing i mean uh, you don't even need to worry about this we can just put the whole thing in a one line right uh, what we are doing here is require dot env config is dot env dot development so we have a dot env dot development and dot env dot production this is how i mean this is locally and we don't do it generally like this we always play with one environment on local and for production we don't look for dot env env dot production but this is just in case if you wanted to switch between different environment based on this then you can just pass this pass this no dnv while running the script so it will set it to the development and production and it can pick the appropriate file from here you can see dot env config config the path is this dot env dot development dot env dot production and both set of files you have here so this is all about configurations like how you can manage the configurations for your project and uh, in locally you can switch to different uh, variables different env files like if you want if i wanted to test my production then you can have something like this but always make sure that no env is pointing to the that, that environment in production and when you do, do a deploy we always put these uh, configuration variables okay because in ci cd it knows you are deploying to dev production or staging so it will pick pick the appropriate ci variables for the dev ci variable for the production and then those variables only will be populated to the container to the lambda to the ec2 instance okay this is how we manage the configurations and in the local in the code managing configuration is kind of simple you manage the env example to tell the developers okay these are the different environment variables we have in our application so make sure you have that in the env when you are uh, running the application so this is the first video now let's see 
how we can manage the logging how we can do the logging uh, as a production application and how we can uh, deploy the application using gitlab ci or something and how we can manage these different environments through that branching strategy so we will do a little bit of demo in the coming videos for the same